The Elixir 1.18 release comes with some new features and enhancements of existing ones. My name's Christian, and I'm a polyglot staff engineer with a fondness for Elixir. Let's take a look at what's new. If you want to try these demos on your machine, a repo with all code and a thorough readme is available with a link in the description. Up first, two new enum methods. The sum function in the enum module only works with enumerables of numeric values. In the past, I've had lists of objects and wanted to grab the sum of a certain value on them. And it ended up looking something like this, where I go through the items and then map them to that numeric value and finally execute a sum. But this approach requires iterating through the list twice and an increased memory consumption with all the copies of the numbers. Now, technically, this could be rewritten as a reduce, and you might think that this is better or good enough, but now we have to deal with an accumulator and we lose the clear naming of the sum method. Fun fact, while I was putting this demo together, I accidentally mixed up the element and accumulator argument order. Probably my own skills issue, but luckily 1.18 comes with a sum by method. This means that we can apply the mapping directly within this sum method without having to create any new intermediate values or remember the syntax for a reduce. Of course, if you're not opposed to the capture operator, this can be simplified down once more by using this ampersand, ampersand one dot numeric value construction. Now, because we have some functions that do the same thing, it's a perfect time to run a quick benchmark using Benchy. If you've never used Benchy before, check out the linked video that walks through Elixir's premier benchmarking tool. So I'll fire this up with one job per implementation and three sample inputs with 10, 100, and 1,000 random items each. Let's wait for the results. All right. So unsurprisingly, the sum method that goes through the map ends up being the slowest at like two times slower. Uh, sum with reduce is a little bit slower than sum by. That's actually surprising to me. Um, although that might just be because we're down to 10 items. Let's look at the big one. In the big one, sum by is faster. Sum by with capture is basically the same. Doing the sum with reduce is actually slower. And then the old sum with the map is quite a bit slower. So yeah, it looks like this thing's actually pretty optimized. And whether you do it with a capture or the function, I think they all end up with the same byte code on the beam. Now, I know I mentioned that there's two new enum methods. The product function, which I've never actually used in real life, now has a product by variant. It does the same thing as the sum one, but it uses multiplication. Moving on, sometimes you want to run the same tests against multiple modules to ensure that their behavior is consistent. Or maybe you have many sample inputs and you want to run the same test to make sure that you have a corresponding output. This is possible in testing libraries from other languages, but support for parameterized tests has finally landed in Elixir's built-in XUnit testing library. And I've got just the problem for it. Recall that we have four implementations of a function that does this sum by using a list of items, extracting the numeric value, and then giving us back the result. Let's make sure that all of our summing implementations operate identically with XUnit's brand new parameterize option. To make this work, I'm going to set the parameterize key on the xunit use statement, the same place where you should be setting async true to have blazingly fast tests that use all available computing resources. Anyway, the value of this parameterize parameter should be a list of maps. These maps will then be merged into the context argument of each test in the module, executing once for every map. In this way, I can write a suite of tests and ensure that all implementations exhibit the same behavior. So here I have four items, and when they are added up, their numeric values become 11. I've got this parameterized on the sum method, which means I'm taking this into the context, and uh, let's give it a run. So if I run mix test dash dash trace, I can see all of the tests that were run, even if they succeeded. And it looks like sum method, sum before this version, sum with reduce, sum by, and sum by with capture, all of them succeeded, all of them ended up returning the number 11 given this input, which is fabulous. This could also be used to create what folks in other languages call table tests. Here's an example from Dave Cheney's Go language blog. So let's parameterize with some example inputs and outputs. I'm gonna use this exact same parameterize argument, but instead I'm gonna take the first item, the first two items, three items, and four items, and ensure that each of them add up to the correct value. Now, inside of my test, I take in the input and the result for each of these entries and make sure that the sum by 
of that input ends up being that result. So if I run those tests, expand this back up, we can see that one by itself ends up being one. We can see that one and two is three and so on and so on. So we can create all of these without having to run test this, test that, and make all of these assert statements multiple times. It's a great way to do some code reuse. But I have a few notes. First off, parameterization happens at the module level, not at the test level. This means that all declared tests in this file will run with all of the parameters. Contrast this with a true table test in Go, where the parameterization happens within the context of a single test rather than a test file. And there's a concept of subtests, which we do not have in Elixir. So again, parameterization happens at the module level. Keep that in mind. And then the other thing is, like all tools, make sure it's being used appropriately. If you find yourself writing multi-headed test declarations, pattern matching on the inputs, you probably should have multiple tests. Similarly, if you find that you're writing conditionals within a test based on the parameters, just make more than one test. And if you're using a Phoenix project and your tests don't directly use xunit.case, don't worry. They probably use something like data case or con case, which internally use the same xunit.case and any arguments that you pass here, like async or now parameterize, will make it into xunit and it'll all behave properly. All right, up next is list.endsWith. When I first saw this method, I thought that it would determine if the last element of a list is some specific value, like A being the last letter in banana, but that's not quite it. You know what, I don't use the list module very often. Enum usually has the functions that I'm looking for. But it turns out that list.endsWith is the complement of list.startsWith, which determines if a list starts with another list of items. So naturally, ends with determines if a list ends with another list. So if I have a list from one to five, I can verify that it ends with three, four, five. This right here, the situation would return true. So let's look at that in the code. Uh, if I go into list ends with test, which again is in the sample repo, I can see these tests will work. So let's run them. I'm not even gonna do a trace. They should just all succeed. Perfect, they all succeed. So we can see that list.ends with with three, four, five is true. Ending with a list of five, also true. And of course, this list doesn't end with one, two, three. So that one ends up being false. Pretty obvious. Now internally, this actually wraps the lists.suffix method from Erlang, which has been around for a long time. Now remember that lists on the beam are linked lists, so there's no random access. That means that operations like this will necessarily require a full traversal in order to return true. Because what we'll have to do is go through each of these elements until the remaining length is the same as the length of the suffix we're looking for, and then we go item by item. Contrast that with starts with, which only has to go through n items, where n is the length of the prefix we're matching. So, a utility to find if a list ends with another list. Cool. But now it's time for something a little bit more exciting. I find myself piping into the debug macro all the time. It puts io.inspect to shame by showing intermediate pipe values and references to the executed code's file and line context. In Elixir 1.18, the debug macro was extended to display more information about if and with statements. With statements can be tricky to debug because each clause is executed sequentially and the first one that fails to match leads to an exit either into the else statement or to the conclude the with statement altogether. Now, before 1.18, debug only showed the result of a with block. Here I have an example in Elixir 1.17. Notice that this just says, eh, the result of this with statement was okay 300. But if I want to see the intermediate values, I have to upgrade to Elixir 1.18. Now in 1.18, if I run that same code, I can see the with clause results and the final expressions output, which is really handy for debugging these complex statements. Now, if statements were given a similar treatment with the predicate result now being logged in addition to the ultimate output. I think this is a really neat addition for debugging in Elixir. And it feels like the debug macro just continues to improve every time I call it. Honestly, I miss it when I'm writing code in other languages. And yeah, we don't have a debugger in Elixir yet, but I think that it's okay. Finally, let's talk about mixed format. A few folks have been pointing out that the unless statement is being deprecated. 
In practice, it tends to make things more complicated than necessary. And additionally, single quote char lists are out of fashion and sigil C should be preferred. Historically, these deprecations had to be managed one by one by developers. But luckily, Elixir 1.18 adds a migrate flag to the mix format command that performs AST level modifications to address these deprecations. I left some code with this deprecated style in the demo repo. And if I run mix format dash dash migrate, notice that the unless condition becomes an if that's negated and the single quote char list was turned into a sigil C char list. Now these migrations are hard coded into the mix format command, so don't expect much extensibility here. To write your own custom code transformations, look instead for the Ash Igniter project, something I looked into a while back. So that's it. A few new features and enhancements added in Elixir 1.18. Are you excited to delete some helpers and lean into the standard library? Ready to refactor lengthy test files into parameterized ones? Maybe you're determined to debug with better feedback, or saying good riddance to unless is more your speed. Whatever your motivation, Elixir 1.18 includes some nice enhancements that help move the language forward. I'm trying to elevate the state of Elixir content on YouTube, so if you enjoyed this video, take a look at the rest of my channel. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.